who's here on Brian Boatwright? All right, if you'll come forward, please. And Judge, he is a little uh, hard of hearing, just so you know. Okay. Thank you, Judge. You're welcome. All right, everyone, we're going to go on the record. So if you're sitting behind the court reporter and you're in the box speaking to your client, I'm going to ask that you uh, not speak behind the court reporter while you're in the box. Court is calling 2023-CR-6411, State of Texas versus Brian Edward Boatwright. Could I have parties announced for the record for the state? Daniel Escobar for the state of Texas. Defense. The attorney of record is Joanne de Hoyos, Joseph Stateson covering, and Mr. Boatwright. Would you give this judge permission for you to do the plea in states of Mr. Hoyos? Yes. All right. And are you Brian Edward Boatwright? Yes, Your Honor. All right. If at any time I'm speaking too low or you don't understand, just let us know. Counsel, have you received all the discovery in this case and did you review it with your client? Yes, Your Honor. Court will find that the state is in compliance with discovery. Mr. Boatwright, I'm going to show you what's entitled True Bill of Indictment. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, Your Honor. Counsel, do you waive the reading of the indictment? Yes, Your Honor. State, are you proceeding on the indictment as presented? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Boatwright, I'm showing you what's entitled court admonishments. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yeah, I believe so. Right. Did you understand you're charged with the offense of theft under $2,500 in hands? That's a state jail felony. The range of punishment is anywhere from 180 days up to two years in the state jail facility and up to a $10,000 fine. Did you understand? Yes, Your Honor. If you have a plea bargain agreement with the state, the court does not have to follow your plea. If for any reason the court doesn't follow your plea and gives you more than you bargained for, the fact that you entered a plea will not be used against you and you will be allowed to withdraw your plea. Did you understand? Yes, sure. Did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call in the right to remain silent? Yes, sure. Did you understand by entering this plea bargain agreement, you were giving up those rights? Yes. And did you intend to give up those rights and enter into a plea in this case? I did, Your Honor. Counsel, has your client been able to provide you with any defenses? Yes, Your Honor. Do you believe he has a rational as well as a factual understanding of the charges against him? He does, Your Honor. Do you believe he's currently competent and was legally sane at the time of the offense? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Boatwright, has anyone threatened you, forced you, or placed you in fear to get you to enter this plea? No, Your Honor. No. Has anyone promised you anything other than the plea? No, Your Honor. Are you satisfied with the way you've been represented? Yes, I am. Are you a U.S. citizen? Yes, sir. Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived his right to jury trial, showing you the plea bargain page. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, Your Honor. According to the plea, punishment is to be assessed at 12 months in the state jail facility. There are no applications, and this is to run concurrent with NIMAC number 723414. Did you understand that to be the plea? Yes. Defense? I believe it's the punishment to be assessed at a cap of 12. We're, we're going to you for ah, a, cap of 12. a cap of 12 months. Did you understand? Yes. All right. And state, is that the plea? Yes, Your Honor. Defense, is that the plea? Yes, Your Honor. Showing you the waiver of appeal paragraph. Did you review that paragraph with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it in both places? I believe so. Did you understand by signing that you're waiving your right to appeal? The only items that can be appealed are written pretrial motions that have been filed, heard, and ruled upon by the court. Did you understand? Yes, Your Honor. Counsel, have there been any such motions? No, Your Honor. Then to the offenses charged, how do you plead? Guilty, not guilty, or no contest? No contest, Your Honor. State, any evidence? State, offer state, civil one in all attachments. No objection, Your Honor. Mr. Boatwright, I'm showing you what's entitled Wavering Consent to Stipulation of Testimony and Stipulations. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Please show me. Again, did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call in the right to remain silent? Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand by entering this plea bargain agreement, the state will be presenting evidence in the form of witnesses, statements, and police reports, but most importantly, there'll be no live testimony. Did you understand? 
Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived and consented to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Court will accept into evidence states exhibits one and attachments and the court will review the same. All right, after reviewing states exhibits one and attachments, court will find there is sufficient evidence to find you guilty, and the court will find you guilty. All right, can we proceed with sentencing? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Uh, state, what's his criminal history other than the theft cases? So, Judge, there is criminal history. I can let you look at the NCIC if you want. Any objection? No objection. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. I apologize. Just there have been two cases today. Okay. It's just basic information. I think one is okay. All right, thank you. All right, anything uh, else from the state no. other than that? All right, defense. Uh, Your Honor, my client had accepted previously uh, this same case. I went to state jail facility for six months, uh, negotiating with the state. We got an agreement to ask you to do a cap of 12 where you would decide six months to 12 months. Mm -hmm. Uh, he knows that he had a 1244A in the past. Yeah. He's done six months. Uh, he's homeless. Uh, he phrases it as chronic homeless. He has no family here. He was staying at Haven for Hope before this happened. Uh, he got hungry. He had an altercation. It's not a, an incident where he left Haven for Hope. He didn't want to cause a scene. He didn't want to retaliate back. He left. Didn't have money. Got a hot dog at Walmart. And he was asking for 10 months. And we're asking something lower than 12. All right. So why does he keep, I mean, I understand, I read the report and I understand it's you're stealing food. All right. And I'm sympathetic and empathetic to the fact that you're homeless and you're hungry, but I know in San Antonio, there are places where the food is free. It may not be what you want, but it's free. So I don't understand. And I looked at your criminal history. So your criminal history is extensive. And so why should I give him less than a year? That's what I'm trying to understand. I would, uh, there was an incident that Haven for Hope had shortly before this happened. He didn't want to pick up a new offense. But I, I understand it's under $20 that, but he didn't want to get into a fight. He pulled off, he walked away. There could have been a scene at Haven for Hope. He relies on Hayden for help to stay there, but he mm -hmm. would he would tell you that he did take the hot dog. Can I add something? Sure. Uh, you want to raise your right hand? Uh, Do you solemnly swear affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? So help you guys. Yes, sure. All right. You can lower your hand if you'll state your name for the record. Uh, I'm going to be for an honest answer for No, no, no. Uh, what's you, your name? Brian, Brian Edward Boatwright. All right. So, Mr. Boatwright, what did you wish to say? 
I was just going to say that uh, once I'm not in that shelter area, I have problems downtown. The, the, you know, the, the homeless society down there is a little different than it is outside of the downtown area, but I start drinking alcohol and then the alcohol is my thinking. And I, and I end up doing what I did. I don't know if that's a, that, um, I can feel it worse or better, but that's basically what happens. And then I end up doing things like that. And uh, it's you, and I try not to do that. I, I end up flying a sign because you have to stay at Haven long enough for DPS to give me my ID back. It's not that $20. I'm going to say ID card. I lost my wallet a few years ago. I struggled with this, and I haven't been able to do any uh, even day labor work through tip services because without with a Haven ID, it's not good enough to register with them. I'm sorry, sir. I need you to speak up or speak in the Oh, point. yes, ma'am. And uh, I don't know why I'm saying all that, but I guess I'm not trying to justify it. I'm just trying to paint a picture of the situation to you know, I guess, and that's uh, because it's not, it's not a very smart thing. And uh, alcohol does tend to make me think of how much smarter that I am at the moment. It makes my life seem more tolerable on the street, but it has a bad end every time, so. And where is your, do you have any family living on the planet? I have a brother and I just don't really, we're not enemies, but I'll leave him alone because, uh, uh, his wife's not comfortable around me. He's got a second wife, and we I just kind of avoid him. I see him once in a while. And he had had it, had tried to have, help get it set up before for me to live at the Salvation Army on Nolan Street, where I used to stay with just my Haven ID at first, living upstairs where you pay by the month. Um, and then I could get all my ID back and get my Social Security retirement started which wouldn't be a lot, but it would cover living there. And I like that salvation art. And what was your prior occupation or what did you do? Well, I've done a lot of labor work, but I used to work with uh, petroleum attorneys and petroleum landman and uh, did title work for oil companies. And uh, that was the main thing that I did and my, what my brother does. He's in a more professional bracket. I was never very stable with anything I did in life. And I've had these recurring issues with alcohol for years. So how are you planning on handling your alcohol issues? Because otherwise, look, whether I give you 12 months or 10 months, at some point in time, you're going to be out of custody. Right. Yes, and you're going to be back out in the free world. I know. So what are your plans? Uh, I always have these plans, but it's not that I don't have plans, but I just, I, I end up. No I follow through. Come a chronic failure. And I think it's uh, somewhere along the line, I might've given up more than I thought I did. And How I old are you? 68. And All I right. thought when I went back to Haven, I hope I was determined that I was going to stay no matter what. And I just, there's a lot of angry people there. And I'm not a person who likes complication. Are you originally from San Antonio? No, ma'am. I'm from Midland, Odessa. All right. So are you planning on going back to Midland or no? Well, I really thought about doing was when the state jail term is up, they will give you a bus ticket anywhere within the state. And I thought about going to El Paso and going over to uh, making my way over to Tucson because I, I like Arizona. And I like well, here's the thing. Yes, they give you a bus ticket to anywhere. But if you're getting a bus ticket and you're going somewhere and there's no plan in place. Well, they have a, they have a very good uh, place. I've never been to it, but it's a, a, a shelter system like Haven for Hope in mm -hmm. a sense. And uh, I would hope it might not have been as crowded as here. Just going somewhere different doesn't solve my problems, but it might be uh, it might be good. I don't know when they have a place called Primavera Center, which is well known, like Haven for Hope. We're having to complete. You, you know, there there was a comedian, and I think he's since passed. But the first time I heard him, and my mom heard him, we thought he was hilarious because he was pretty deadpan, and he told this joke, and his joke was. No matter where you go, there you are. 
So it's wherever you go, your problems that you've had before are still going to be there. You can't outrun problems. Right. All right. Uh, any questions? No, you're not. No, you're All right, Mr. Boatwright, I'm going to sentence you to 10 months in the state jail facility. I'll give you credit for any time served. Taking consideration NIMAG number 723414, and as previously stated, the court is finding you guilty. Uh, I can ask that you be placed in the therapeutic community while you're there. It doesn't increase your time. Your time is 10 months. Whether you're in therapeutic community or not, it's still going to be 10 months. But perhaps they can help you uh, with your alcohol issues. Would you like me to recommend that? Yes, Your Honor. That's fine. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna show you what's entitled trial court certification of defendant's rights to appeal. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it and did you sign it? I believe I did. All right, because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement and because you waive your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. And because this is a felony conviction, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. If you have a question of what a weapon or ammunition is, you'll need to speak to an attorney. Do you understand? Yes. Sir. All right, we can go off the record. Here's the thing, you're in your 60s. Yeah. We, you and I both, we are in the twilight of our lives. And as my mom says, father time is not great to anyone. Yeah. So you're gonna have to start following through on whatever your plans are, because otherwise you may end up finding yourself in prison. Your counsel will tell you at a certain point in time with state jail felonies, they are enhanceable. And your minimum may end up being, well, your maximum may end up being 20 years. And I don't think you want to go to prison for stealing $19 worth of food for 20 years. I once had a client, and it's a matter of public record, so I can say it, who was on parole. And he was on parole for stealing uh, what goes on the water hose, the little, I forget what you call it, but it's the little thing that connects it to the faucet. And that is 50 cents. And do you know what? He was on parole for life for 50 cents. So don't be that person. If you have a drug or alcohol problem, guess what? You can go to an NA meeting anywhere in the Texas, anywhere in the United States. And I guarantee you, if time when you get out, if you step foot in the free world and you find an AA meeting or uh, an NA meeting, there are people probably in that group who can probably tell you, oh, I used to be where you were. This is the shelter I went to, or I used to be where you were. Here's where you can get some free food. Because otherwise, you got to find yourself living at somebody's institution. Do you understand? Yes. All right. Good luck to you, Mr. Boatwright. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Judge. You're welcome. All right. Uh, Randy. Randy All right, this is a plea, uh, but Bashan, there are no applications. Court is calling 2023 CR 7166, State of Texas versus Luis Carnata. Could I have parties announced for the record for the state? Daniel Escobar for the State of Texas. Defense? David McLean for Luis Carnata. Are you Mr. Carnata? Yes, sir. Counsel, have you received all the discovery and did you review it with your client? I did, Your Honor. Court will find that the state is in compliance with discovery. Mr. Coronado, I'm gonna show you what's entitled true bill of indictment. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes. Counsel, do you weigh the reading of the indictment? I do, Your Honor. State, are you proceeding on the indictment as presented? We are, Your Honor. Mr. Coronado, I'm showing you what's entitled court admonishments. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes. You're charged with the offense of theft under $2,500 enhanced. That's a state jail felony. The range of punishment is anywhere from 180 days up to two years in the state jail facility and up to a $10,000 fine. Did you understand? Yes. If you have a plea bargain agreement with the state, the court does not have to follow your plea. If for any reason the court does not follow your plea and gives you more than you bargained for, the fact that you entered a plea will not be used against you and you will be allowed to withdraw your plea. Did you understand? Yes. Did you understand you have a right to a jury trial? a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call in the right to remain silent. Yes. Did you understand by entering this plea, you were giving up those rights? Yes. And did you intend to give up those rights and enter into a plea in this case? Yes. Counsel, has your client been able to provide you with any defenses? Yes, Your Honor. 
Do you believe he has a rational as well as a factual understanding of the charges against him? I do, Your Honor. Do you believe he's currently competent and was legally sane at the time of the offense? I do, Your Honor. Mr. Coronado, has anyone threatened you, coerced you, or placed you in fear to get you to enter this plea? No. Has anyone promised you anything other than the plea? Are you satisfied with the way you've been represented? Yes. Are you a U.S. citizen? Yes. Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived his right to jury trial. Showing you the plea bargain page, did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes. According to the plea, punishment is to be assessed at 118 days in the Bear County Jail under 12.44. There are no applications. Did you understand that to be the plea? Yes. Defense? Yes. State? Yes, Your Honor. Showing you the waiver of appeal paragraph. Did you review that paragraph with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in both places? Yes. Did you understand by signing that you're waiving your right to appeal? The only items that can be appealed are written pretrial motions that have been filed, heard, and ruled upon by the court. Did you understand? Yes. Counselor, are there been any such motions? No, Your Honor. Then to the offenses charge, how do you plead? Guilty, not guilty, or no contest? No contest. State any evidence to support the plea? State offer states exhibit one in all attachments. Your Honor, I've reviewed that with my client. We have no objection. All right, thank you. State, you may be excused to continue to confer. Thank you, Judge. Mr. Coronado, I'm showing you what's entitled wavering consent to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes. Again, did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call in the right to remain silent. Yes. Did you understand that today the state will be presenting evidence in the form of witnesses, statements, and police reports, but most importantly, there will be no live testimony. Did you understand? Yes. Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived and consented to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Court will accept into evidence states exhibits one and attachments and review the same. After reviewing states exhibits one in attachments, the court will find there is sufficient evidence to find you guilty, and the court will find you guilty. Are we proceeding with sentencing? Yes, Your Honor. Anything you wish to say on behalf of your client? Your Honor, uh, I've, I've discussed this matter with my client. Um, he understands he was not in a right place at that point. He's going to try and endeavor to uh, stay out of trouble. We just asked the court to call the plea bargain. Mr. Coronado, why do you keep spilling? Um, I was, this is, uh, I was depressed. I was just, I didn't know what I was doing. Well, no, a lot of, yeah, no, you knew what you were doing. You were intoxicated. Yeah. You went into this hotel. You took an item from their pantry, which was two beers, put them in your pants, and then went and sat on the bus stop drinking. So again, why do you continue to steal? Because if this were your first time stealing, you would be in misdemeanor court unless the cost of beer has gone up exponentially so why do you continue to steal um so, so I, I was out in the street and i, I was just good that my friends was just peer pressure me just to, how old are you 31 at 31 no one has peer pressure i, I don't understand a 31 year old what were people were your friends saying steal it steal it take the beer i don't think so like convincing me, I guess. I'm sorry, what? Like convincing me. Yeah, I don't understand a 31-year-old who's subjecting themselves to peer pressure. And who are you hanging around with? What age are they that they are pretty using young. peer pressure to have you steal? They're pretty young, like 20, 20, 26, 25. 26 and 25, that's still not the peer pressure crowd. When people think of peer pressure, they're thinking people who are in maybe high school, maybe middle school. We called it junior high when I was growing up. Do you want to spend the rest of your life in and out of prison and in and out of jails? No. All right. 
these cases, this state jail felony, at some point in time, if you continue on the path that you're on, these state jail felonies are going to be enhanced. And what that will mean is you will not be looking at up to two years in the state jail facility. We will start talking about prison time. Do you understand? So whatever is going on in your life, you need to get your life together. And you are at an age where you should not be hanging around or being with people who you say are using peer pressure to make you do the wrong thing. Do you have children? Yeah. What are their ages? 12. Just one? No, I got two. 12 years. 12, two 12 year olds? Are they twins? No, they're, they're six months apart. Oh, okay. All right. The court will find you guilty, sentence you to 118 days in the Bear County Jail on the 1244, give you credit for any time served. I'm showing you what's entitled trial court certification of defendant's rights to appeal. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? Yes. Because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement and because you waived your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Because this is a felony conviction, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. If you have a question over what a weapon or ammunition is, you'll need to speak to an attorney. Do you understand? Yes. All right, we can go off the record. Are you in your 12-year-old's lives? Yes. How so? Um, Do you I see them on a daily basis? I see them um, as much as I can. As what does that even mean? Um, their mom was in prison. And then the other one, um, we, she had another relationship, so it was pretty hard. So are they living with this mother or are they living with grandparents? No, with the mother. All right. You're going to have to try to do better things for your children. Otherwise, you know what's going to end up happening? If I have not retired, I may end up seeing your children before me. And you know what they're going to say? Well, I have a father who stole, so that's why I steal. And whatever the mother went to prison for, they're going to say, the reason why I do this is because my mother went to prison. Both you and the mother of these two boys or two children have not given them a good example and you all are giving them a bad start. You understand? All right, good luck to you. Always good seeing you, Mr. McClay. All right, Ms. Griffin, if you'll come forward. All right, and this is an application, uh, Vashon. Court is calling 2020 CR 42, I'm sorry, 4520, State of Texas versus Amanda Carroll Griffin. Could I have parties announced for the record for the state? Brittany Mitchell for the state. Defense. Assistant Public Defender Renee Munoz on behalf of Ms. Griffin. And are you Ms. Griffin? I am, yes, ma'am. Counsel, have you received all of the discovery in this case and did you review it with your client? Yes, Your Honor, and I did. Court will find that the state is in compliance with discovery. Ms. Griffin, I'm showing you what's entitled application for community supervision. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? Yes, ma'am. Sure mm -hmm. Showing you what's entitled true bill of indictment. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, ma'am. I sure do. Counsel, do you weigh the reading of the indictment? We do so waive, Your Honor. State, are you proceeding on the indictment as presented? Your Honor, we are waiving the repeater enhancement. Any objection? No objection from the defense judge. All right, Ms. Griffin, I'm showing you what's entitled court admonishments and defendants waivers and affidavit of admonitions. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes, ma'am, I sure did. Did you understand you're charged with assault, family second offense? That's a third degree felony. The range of punishment is anywhere from two to 10 years in prison and up to a $10,000 fine. Yes, ma'am. If you have a plea bargain agreement with the state, the court does not have to follow your plea. If for any reason the court doesn't follow your plea and gives you more than you bargained for, the fact that you entered a plea will not be used against you and you will be allowed to withdraw your plea. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call in the right to remain silent? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand by entering this plea bargain agreement you were giving up those rights? Yes, ma'am. Did you intend to give up those rights and enter into a plea in this case? Yes, yes ma'am. Counsel, has your client been able to provide you with any defenses? She sure has, Your Honor. Do you believe she has a rational as well as a factual understanding of the charges against her? Yes, Judge. Do you believe she's currently competent and was legally sane at the time of the offense? That's correct, Your Honor. Ms. Griffin, has anyone threatened you, coerced you, or placed you in fear to get you to enter this plea? No, Your Honor. Anyone promised you anything other than the plea? No, Your Honor. Are you satisfied with the way you've been represented? Yes, Your Honor. Are you a U.S. citizen? 
Yes, Your Honor. The court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived a right to jury trial. Showing you the plea bargain page. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, Your Honor. According to the plea, punishment is to be assessed at six years of the prison. State recommends community supervision. There's an affirmative finding of family violence. There's to be no contact with Britley, B-R-I-T-L-E-E, Sue Griffin, and Carol Stobaugh, S-T-O-B-A-U-G-H. Did you understand that to be the plea? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand with an affirmative finding of family violence, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition? Yes, Your Honor. Just a moment. Yes, Judge. Yes. Right. Did you understand with the affirmative finding of family violence, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition? Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand with an affirmative finding of family violence, you're not allowed to be designated as primary custodial parent? Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand that to be the entirety of your plea? Yes, Your Honor. Defense? Yes, Your Honor. State? Yes. Showing you the waiver of appeal paragraph. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in both places? Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand by signing that you're waiving your right to appeal? The only items that can be appealed are written pretrial motions that have been filed, heard, and ruled upon by the court. Did you understand? Yes, Your Honor. Counsel, have there been any such motions? No, Your Honor. Next, I'm showing you outside the plea bargain agreement. The state is requesting that your community supervision be for a term of six years. There will be a big evaluation, TAP evaluation, and anger management. Did you understand those are recommendations from the state and the court does not have to follow those recommendations? Yes, Your Honor. Then to the offense is charged, how do you plead? Guilty, not guilty, or no contest? No contest, Your Honor. State, any evidence? Your Honor, we offer state's exhibit number one in all attachments. No objection, Your Honor. Sean, you what's entitled waiver and consent to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes, Your Honor. Again, did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call and the right to remain silent? Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand that today the state will be presenting evidence in the form of witnesses' statements, police reports, and judgments? But most importantly, there will be no live testimony. Did you understand? Yes, Your Honor. Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived and consented to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Court will accept into evidence states' exhibits one and attachments and review the same. All right. After reviewing states exhibits one and attachments, the court will find there is sufficient evidence to find you guilty and the court will find you guilty. Are you proceeding with sentencing? Yes, Your Honor. Anything you wish to say on behalf of your client? Respectfully request that the court honor the plea bargain agreements on behalf of my client. Um, All right. The repeat enhancement allegation that's been waived. Who was the complainant in that case? Uh, it was uh, her mother. Mm-hmm. All right. So, Ms. Griffin, it appears that you have an issue. What is your issue? I know everybody who comes in there has issues, <laughs> right? But I don't understand the violence against family members. Yeah, the relationship with um, my mom and dad wasn't the best growing up. Why not? Um, they abandoned me. Okay. All right. So how old are you? 40. All right. At some point in time, you're going to have to address those issues because whatever trauma you have in the past, whatever you, you feel like your parents didn't do, because nobody's give a, given a parenting book and some people have horrible parents. They do. That's a fact. But you cannot continue on the vein that you're continuing on because maybe your parents we're not the best of parents. Yes, okay. Now, when you're drug tested today, what are the results going to be? Negative. All right. And are there any alcohol issues with you? Absolutely not. Are you employed? 
not currently, no, ma'am. So how do you support yourself? I've, I, I've been just kind of, I've, I, well, I do, I am employed. I'm a delivery driver for Grubhub and mm -hmm. Bash right now and a few other uh, the delivery companies. Um, it's kind of touch and go with like my vehicle and I have three dogs that, you know, they're my life and my family. So uh, I'm, um, I just got approved for housing with Opportunity Home and mm -hmm. I went down and filled out the paperwork for that, for the secondary, I guess, application there mm -hmm. um, about two weeks ago, three weeks ago. They told me it would be about two to three months before I was contacted to get in somewhere. So currently I'm just, I'm trying to. So where are you living now? And when I say living, do you have a place to stay? Um, I, I, I stay with a friend or in my, in my vehicle. Okay. And do you have any children? Um, I do. But they're grown. Oh, how old are they? Well, my youngest is 16, but he's with my mother. And um, the next one is 18. And then Brittany right. is 21. And then I Why is a 16 year old with your mother? Because he didn't, he didn't want to come back and live with me at my house um, before I got evicted because um, I made him follow the rules. He wanted to go to my mom's when he got um, kicked out of school up in Comal County mm -hmm. um, because he gets everything that he wants over there. He doesn't, he didn't have to follow the rules and stuff like that. So there's something going on here. I don't know what's going on here, but there are some issues. Um, yeah. And I'm trying to figure out what those issues are. Have you ever had a mental health diagnosis? Yes, ma'am, I sure have. All right, and yes, what what is that? Um, it was bipolar two, um, agoraphobia, PTSD. All right, so are you under a doctor's care currently? I, am not. I went um, to um, CSCD, I guess. CSCH. CSCH, yeah. <laughs> and um, when I was released from prison in 2020 and they told me that I didn't qualify. I didn't need services All at right. that time. So I think she, she needs some services. Yes, yes counsel. She, yes, your honor. That's why in the plea bargain agreements, uh, it's my understanding that it should be a supervisor under the MIC caseload and uh, be coordinated set up with CHCS for reevaluation, diagnosis, possible medication. All right, this is what the court is gonna do. As previously stated, the court is finding you guilty. The court will sentence you to six years in the prison, suspended and probated for six years. There's an affirmative finding of family violence. There's to be no contact with Britley, B-R-I-T-L-E-E, -E, Sue Griffin, or Carolyn, C-A-R-O-L, Y-N, Stobar, S-T-O-B-A-U-H. There's going to be a MIC evaluation, anger management. I'm going to want a TAP evaluation. Uh, follow the recommend recommendations of TAP, but if TAP wants inpatient treatment, we'll start with intensive outpatient treatment. Uh, go ahead and do a referral to uh, Center for Healthcare Services. I'm gonna want a UA today. There's to be regular reporting by Zoom or in person. Regular UAs, parenting classes, 200 hours of community service restitution. Uh, once parenting classes are completed, that will be deemed satisfied. Proof of employment within 45 days. There's to be no employment as a home health care provider or with minors. And there's to be no unsupervised contact with minors. And I'm going to want field visits one time per month. And that'll be until she is placed either on the MIT caseload or has a mental health case manager. After that has been completed, 
then uh, probation, you can do field visits as you deem necessary. And if they could also help her with housing. Uh, probation, is there anything else? Um, Your Honor, you said you wanted a UA today. Is that important to the courtroom? Yes. All right. Is there anything else you need from the court to be successful? Uh, no, thank you for housing. You're welcome. I'm going to show you what's entitled trial court certification of defendants rights to appeal. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? Yes, sir. Because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement, and because you waive your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Because this is a felony conviction and also an affirmative finding of family violence, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. If you have a question over what a weapon or ammunition is, you'll need to speak to your attorney. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. All right, we can go off the record. Here's the thing. Everybody, I don't know anybody who grew up with Mary Poppins as their parent. Everybody always has some issues with their parents. Some of us have more issues with our parents than others. Some of us have horrible parents. Some of us have good parents, but we just go astray. I don't know what the issue is with your family, but the fact that your son is living with your mom tells me that there are some issues. You're not to have any contact with your those family members. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. If later down the line, if they want to have contact with you because they see that things are going well, it would probably be best for you and your family members to be able to sit down and calmly have a objective third party, probably a therapist, to see if there can be any repairs to your relationship. Because at some point in time, you're responsible for all of your actions, right? And you can't continue to blame abandonment issues on your actions. You're right. Yes, all right. Yes, all right. Good luck to you. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. Thank you, Honor. May be excused. Thank, yes, you may be excused. Thank you. Joe Aguirre. Yes. Court is calling 2023 CR 5468, State of Texas versus Johnny Joe Aguirre. And I have the parties announced for the record for the state. Hey, welcome to the state. Defense. Renee Munoz on behalf of Johnny Aguirre. Are you Mr. Aguirre? Yes. Counsel, you've received all the discovery and did you review it with your client? Yes, and I did, Your Honor. Mr. Gary, I'm showing you what's entitled application for deferred adjudication or community supervision. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? Yes, ma'am. Showing you what's entitled true bill of indictment. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, ma'am. Counsel, do you weigh the reading of the indictment? Yes, Your Honor. State, are you proceeding on the indictment as presented? We are, Your Honor. Mr. Gary, I'm showing you what's entitled court admonishments and defendants waivers and affidavit of admonitions. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand you're charged with the offense of possession of a controlled substance penalty group one, four grams to 200 grams. That's a second degree felony. The range of punishment is anywhere from two to 20 years in prison and up to a $10,000 fine. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. If you have a plea bargain agreement with the state, the court does not have to follow your plea. If for any reason the court doesn't follow your plea and gives you more than you bargained for, the fact that you entered a plea will not be used against you and you will be allowed to withdraw your plea. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state will call in the right to remain silent? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand by entering this plea bargain agreement, you were giving up those rights? Yes, ma'am. And did you intend to give up those rights and enter into a plea in this case? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand if the court were to grant your application for deferred adjudication, if for any reason your deferred adjudication were revoked, the court could find you guilty and sentence you up to 20 years in prison and up to a $10,000 fine. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. Counsel, has your client been able to provide you with any defenses? Yes. Do you believe he has a rational as well as a factual understanding of the charges against him? Yes, Your Honor. Do you believe he's currently competent and was legally sane at the time of the offense? That is correct, Judge. Mr. Gary, has anyone threatened you, coerced you, or placed you in fear to get you to enter this plea? No, ma'am. Has anyone promised you anything other than the plea? No, ma'am. Are you satisfied with the way you've been represented? Yes, ma'am. Are you a U.S. citizen? Yes, ma'am. The court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived his right to jury trial. Showing you the plea bargain page, did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, ma'am. According to the plea, there's a $500 fine to be probated. State recommends deferred adjudication. They're taking in consideration 703-653-716-121. And there's $57 restitution to SAPD for drug testing. Did you understand that to be the plea? Yes, ma'am. Defense? 
Yes, Your Honor. State? Yes, Your Honor. Showing you the waiver of appeal paragraph. Did you review that paragraph with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand by signing that you're waiving your right to appeal? The only items that can be appealed are written pretrial motions that have been filed, heard, and ruled upon by the court. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. Counsel, are there any such motions? No, Your Honor. Next, I'm showing you outside the plea bargain agreement. State is requesting that your community supervision be for a term of five years. There be a TAP evaluation, 200 hours community service restitution, no contact with Walmart at 8923 West Military, San Antonio, Texas, 78245-6550, Enrique M. Barrera Parkway, San Antonio, Texas, 78201. There's a referral to felony drug court when there's room. DDRF, regular UAs, and sober support meetings. Did you understand those are recommendations from the state and the court does not have to follow those recommendations? Yes, ma'am. Then to the offenses charged, how do you plead guilty, not guilty, or no contest? Fine. State any evidence? Your Honor, I offer State's Exhibit 1 in the attachments. No objections. Mr. Aguirre, I'm showing you what's entitled Wavering Consent to Stipulation of Testimony and Stipulations. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes, ma'am. Again, did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call in the right to remain silent? Yes. Did you understand that today the state will be presenting evidence in the form of witnesses' statements and police reports, but most importantly, there will be no live testimony. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived and consented to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Court will accept into evidence state's exhibits one and attachments. Court has reviewed the same. The court will find there's sufficient evidence to find you guilty. Court will defer finding of guilt as you've applied for deferred adjudication. Are you proceeding with sentencing? If we may, Your Honor. Anything you wish to say on behalf of your client? Uh, yes, Judge. I mean, at this time, he is currently homeless. Um, I know the state uh, was in agreement with probating the $500. Uh, we would ask if possible uh, minimum monthly supervision fees. Um, he's still trying to get back up on his feet. Uh, he's not currently residing at a shelter, but he's looking into Haven for Hope, and um, he's also um, working to get coordinated with the Center for Healthcare Services. We were looking at a, a potential uh, mental health court referral, but um, it seems that uh, the Center for Healthcare Services referral is still good, so uh, he's going to be working on, on that as well, Judge, um, and hopefully get evaluated, uh, set up with medication, um, as well as case management. All right. Do you believe he's competent? I do, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Gary, when's the last time you had employment? I was self-employed. Um, Doing what? In November. I did uh, pest control, lawn service, handyman work, and um, and tree trimming. Okay. How far did you go in school? I did some college. Okay. Why did you stop? Um, I just... I, I don't know what I was going through. That was maybe like 18 years ago. I'm not sure. All right. How did you end up where you are now? I'm sorry. How did you end up where you are now? Like, why did you start using drugs? My brother got killed. Okay. And when did that happen? A uh, year ago. Okay. So do you have any family support? My father. Do you have any children? Three. What are their ages? 15, 13, and I'm not sure about the youngest one. All right. When's the last time you saw them? Um, I would say about four years ago, but I've never seen the smallest one. When's the last time you used? Not that long, about like three days ago. All right. And are you using meth? Yes. How often? Every, almost every day. Okay. All right. Mr. Aguirre, honestly, it appears to the court that you need inpatient treatment. Do you agree with that? No. But I mean, you're using every day. I know. That's a problem because let me just tell you, depending on where you are in your um, sobriety, nobody wants inpatient treatment. America. depending on where you are, because they're, they're saying, I'm going to be inpatient. I want to still live my life. But if you continue on the path that you're continuing on, you may not live much longer. 
because you may end up getting bad drugs and overdosing or something else may end up happening to you. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to schedule you for a tap evaluation and it'll just be a tap probation. And that's going to take place while you're in custody. And how long should the tap evaluation take probation? All right. So they're going to do a tap evaluation on you in custody. I'm going to have them hold you in custody and we're going to bring you back in two weeks. And in two weeks time, I'm going to let you know if it's going to be an inpatient treatment. And I know you're probably feeling bad and how dare the judge do this, but actually I'm trying to save you. Okay. Can I say something? Sure. Um, so I did adult and teen challenge here in San Antonio. Uh, it's a year long. I did it for, for four months mm -hmm. and I felt like I was ready to come out. I couldn't, something about being held somewhere, I couldn't do it, but I've done other drugs my whole life. Mm -hmm. And I never say I quit because I, I consider that a lie if I go back and do it, mm -hmm. but I have stopped and I've stopped a lot longer than four months. Okay. All right. So even though felony drug court is full, I'm going to see if possibly, well, if you could please call felony drug court and beg them. Yes, sir. We were, we're speaking with the state about, about the issue of the drug usage, Your Honor, and we're thinking maybe, maybe lifetime recovery, something that he can get his bearings on so he can be successful with probation. So we had looked at, at mental health courts, but. Um, well, I'm, I'm going to recall this in two weeks. So this is what we'll do. Counsel, if you can check on mental health court and if mental health court wants to accept them, I know they'll only accept him if there is, if he's not on probation because they only do pretrial. Right. I will be more than willing if both parties agree to hear a motion for new trial and grant the motion for new trial so he can go get the mental health treatment he needs. But what I can tell you what I've learned about mental health is until he's clean and sober, they're not gonna get a good reading on his mental health issue. So we're going to come back in two weeks, Ms. Ferguson. Oh, you're, I, have, I have vacation later on file. I'll be out, but I'll have some from the office. With All right. Or if you want to appear by Zoom, that's fine. I'll be in Europe. <laughs> oh, what part? Um, Croatia, Budapest, uh, Austria. As well. I've never been to those are the places that I want to visit. They tell me Croatia is beautiful. Yes, that's what I hear as well. I'll be sure to let you know. When I get okay. Uh, Norma, what date? Um, yes. All right. So we'll be back on September 26. Yes. And if you could tell them it's really urgent, and I know that they're overbooked, but he wants the help and he desperately needs it. Okay. All right, Mr. Gary, we're going to bring you back on September 26. If everything is done before then, we'll bring you back sooner than that, okay? All right, and I'm really trying to do this to help you because I don't want to wake up tomorrow morning and there's somebody on the side of the road dead and they tell me it's Mr. Gary and I could have done this to help you, okay? Can I say one more thing? Sure. Um, I, got, I feel like I was stuck here because my brother, and I, I, I still want to be around, but I want a chance to prove it my, myself. Okay. Can I, is there anything I can do to prove it, to prove the, the two weeks to show you it? I no, can't because I, here, I can't, here's the thing. I, is, I, I'm, 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 I'm sorry. Um, no, no, no. But Mr. Gary, if you were tested today, it's going to be positive. Yes, and you knew you were coming to court today. Yes, ma'am. And knowing that you were coming to court today, if you could stop it and do it yourself, you would have said, you know what? I need to be clean for court because you've been in court before. You know that usually I test people whether or not they are positive for drugs or not. But what I can tell you, if you're using meth every day, you need inpatient treatment. I mean, it's not a bad thing. And I guarantee you, if you end up with inpatient treatment, and you work the program, you're going to look completely different probably in two months time than how you look now. Okay. 
Now you said you lost your brother and I'm sorry for that, but if you don't want to do it for yourself, do it for your brother. Cause I know your brother loved you, right? And your brother probably wants the best for you. And right now you're using drugs is not the best for you. Okay. Yes, all right. So we're going to see you on September 26th. All right. All right. Thank you. Where's your client? All right. She needs to come back at 1 30. You. You're welcome. Defense. Megan Enriquez for David Morales. And are you David Morales? Yes, ma'am. Yes, Your Honor. Right. I apologize. No problem. Counsel, yeah. have you received all the discovery? I put a mint in my mouth. I had a little bit of an itch in my throat, so I apologize. But that's oh, what no. That is. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, counsel, have you received all of the discovery? Yes, Your Honor. And did you review it with your client? Yes, Your Honor. All right. The court will find that the state is um, in compliance with discovery. And are you listed as the attorney of record? No, it's John Coons. All right. Mr. Morales, do you have any objection to this attorney standing in and completing this plea for no. John Coons? No, Your Honor. All right. Next, I'm going to show you uh, what is entitled true bill of indictment. Mr. Morales, did you uh, review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, Your Honor. Counsel, do you weigh the reading of the indictment? Yes, Your Honor. State, are you proceeding on the indictment as presented? Not. Are you proceeding on the indictment as presented? Uh, just on count one, we'll waive counts two and three and the enhancement paragraph. Any objection? No objection, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Morales, I'm going to show you what's entitled court admonishments and defendants waivers and affidavit of admonitions. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand you're charged with the offense of fraudulent use or possession of identifying information less than five elderly? That's a third degree felony. Range of punishment is anywhere from two to 10 years in prison and up to a $10,000 fine. Did you understand? Yes, Your Honor. If you have a plea bargain agreement with the state, the court does not have to follow your plea. If for any reason the court doesn't follow your plea and gives you more than you bargained for, the fact that you entered a plea will not be used against you and you will be allowed to withdraw your plea. Did you understand? Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call in the right to remain silent? Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand by entering this plea bargain agreement you were giving up those rights? Yes, Your Honor. And did you intend to give up those rights and enter into a plea in this case? Yes, Your Honor. Counsel, has your client been able to provide you with any defenses? Yes, he has, Your Honor. Do you believe he has a rational as well as a factual understanding of the charges against him? Yes, I believe he does. Do you believe he's currently competent and was legally sane at the time of the offense? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Morales, has anyone threatened you, coerced you, or placed you in fear to get you to enter this plea? No, Your Honor. Has anyone promised you anything other than the plea bargain agreement? No, Your Honor. Are you satisfied with the way you've been represented? Yes, Your Honor. Are you a U.S. citizen? Yes, Your Honor. Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived his right to jury trial. I'm going to show you what's entitled plea bargain page. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, Your Honor. According to the plea, the state is proceeding on count one. They're waiving count two and three in the enhancement. They're asking that your punishment be assessed at three years in the prison. There are no applications. There's to be restitution to Matilda Ramirez and the amount of $22,914. Did you understand that to be the plea? Yes, Your Honor. Defense? Yes, Your Honor. State? Yes, Judge. Showing you the waiver of appeal paragraph. Did you review that paragraph with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it in both places? Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand by signing that you're waiving your right to appeal? The only items that can be appealed are written pretrial motions that have been filed, heard, and ruled upon by the court. Did you understand? Yes, Your Honor. Counsel, have there been any such motions? No, Your Honor. Then to the offense and count one, how do you plea? Guilty, not guilty, or no contest? No contest. State any evidence to support the plea? Offer states one with the attachment. No objection. Showing you what's entitled waiver and consent to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes, Your Honor. Again, did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call in the right to remain silent? Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand that today the state will be presenting evidence in the form of witness statements and police reports, but most importantly, there will be no live testimony. Did you understand? Yes, Your Honor. 
court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived and consented to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Court will accept into evidence states exhibits one and attachments and review the same. All right, after reviewing state's exhibits one and attachments, the court will find there is sufficient evidence to find you guilty and the court will find you guilty. Are you proceeding with sentencing? Yes, Your Honor. Anything you wish to say on behalf of your client? Um, just briefly, Your Honor, he is he su su suffered with a drug addiction, which is was the root cause of this case. Um, the complaining witness is his grandmother. Um, he feels terrible for what happened and what led up to this. Um, he does intend when he gets out to help um, pay back this money that he took from her from her retirement check um, that she was receiving. And we just ask that you respectfully um, follow the pre-bargain agreement we've reached with the state. All right, state. Uh, nothing further. All right, and state, uh, did you speak with the complaining witness? Uh, we have. All right. And this is what she wishes? She's okay. Okay. All right. Court will sentence you to three years in the prison, give you credit for any time served. There is to be no contact with and restitution to Matilda, Matilda Ramirez in the amount of $22,914. Yes, ma'am. Your Honor, could we address when he is released from prison? Can we readdress the no contact order issue? I believe he's in on good terms with his grandmother despite all of this. She currently puts money on his commissary book still despite all of this terrible situation. Um, so I think that it would be her wish to have contact with her grandson. I mean, I, I understand what you're saying, counsel, but sometimes you have to protect people from themselves until you are able to do better. You know, because sometimes I will tell you in families, there's always that one person, be it the grandmother, the sister, the aunt, who says, well, I don't care if the rest of you are turning your back on this person who keeps stealing from everybody, but I'm not gonna do it. So you've taken your grandmother's retirement. And I will tell you, Grandparents, unless people are independently wealthy, the money that they receive once a month is a set amount that they receive that month. And it's bare, it's usually when they're getting their social security and they've worked hard all their life, it's usually barely enough for them to live the way they were living when they were working. It's usually, all right, I got to pay the mortgage. Hopefully the mortgage has been paid off. I got to get groceries. And in this day and age, everybody has to get medication. And so you took $22,000, well, really close to $23,000 for your grandmother. The yes. fact that she is still putting commissary on your book, it tells me that she's not at the mind frame yet where she realizes she needs to cut you off till you're responsible. I find in my short time on the planet, even though I'm in the twilight of my life, everybody at the jail has always improved themselves. So once you improve yourself when you're on the outside, then perhaps it can be reconsidered for contact. But for now, it should be no contact. Yes, Your Honor. All right. I'm going to show you what's entitled trial court certification of defendant's rights to appeal. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? Yes, Your Honor. Because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement, and because you waive your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. And because this is a felony conviction, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. If you have a question of what a weapon or ammunition is, you'll need to speak to an attorney. Do you understand? Yes, Your Honor. All right. And what drugs have you been using? Um, I had a really bad addiction with methamphetamines. Okay. I recently have had a uh, life-threatening disease, I guess, if you will. I would not like to speak about it. No, no, no. I understand. Affect my life. So for the past three, four months, I had not been smoking any meth or even weed. And how long have you been in custody? I've been in custody for one month exactly. All right. Um, so if you would like, 
I can recommend the therapeutic community. Whether or not they accept you is completely up to them. I don't have any jurisdiction to force them to accept you. Uh, the therapeutic community will not increase your time in custody, but if you're placed in it, at least they can help you get on the right track or maintain your sobriety. Um, I would like to just follow the plea agreement, Your Honor. Okay. All right. Is there anything else? No. Nothing further. All right. We can go off the record. Here's the thing. There are a few people in your life who truly love you. And I can say this about myself as well, and who will truly be there for you no matter what. Your grandmother appears to be one of that per, one of those per people. Even though you hurt her and stole her money, she still put money on your books. You've got to start respecting your grandmother and respecting other people in, their, in your life who are trying to help you. And if your drug addiction is so bad that you're willing to steal from them, that's when you yourself, with the last ounce of morality you have, even though you're under the haze of drug addiction, you need to cut yourself off from those people. Do you understand? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Good luck to you. Thank you, Your Honor. You're welcome. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. Thank you.